Hi, I'm Bill Dobbins. In this presentation, I would like to give an overview of the solo piano tradition in jazz. All the music you'll hear is from the fourth volume of my series of books, The Contemporary Jazz Pianist. In order to clearly illustrate the specific contributions of the various pianists, I first composed a theme based on the harmonic progression of the well-known standard, All of Me. Then I wrote variations in the styles of 24 different pianists. Through this approach, the evolution of this musical tradition, as well as the differences between particular pianists, can be easily distinguished. I've selected 12 traditional and 12 modern pianists. In this first part, we will hear the 12 variations based on the traditional styles. The selection was rather difficult to make, but these 24 pianists are certainly among the most important who have contributed to this tradition. Each series of 12 variations moves in third relationships through all 12 keys, A flat, E, C, B, G, E flat, D, B flat, G flat, F, D flat, and A. The melody of the theme sounds like an upside down version of the melody of All of Me. Except for the variations in the styles of Duke Ellington and Mead Lux Lewis, the essential movements of this chord progression can be heard in each variation. Even though there are many harmonic embellishments and alterations, the basic chord progression is always there. This is how the theme sounds. Whether ragtime is considered as the first jazz style or as a pre-jazz style, Scott Joplin is undoubtedly the most important ragtime pianist. Many of his well-known compositions, such as Maple Leaf Rag and The Entertainer, are still frequently performed. Ragtime music is actually like syncopated march music. Unlike the early jazz styles, the eighth notes or sixteenth notes are interpreted strictly rather than with a swing conception. As in the music of many of the early jazz soloists, the role of improvisation is usually limited to melodic ornamentation. In this first variation, I've used the most common ragtime form, which is similar to that of the military march, and might be represented by the letter scheme AABBA CCDD. In the first theme, there's a quote from a famous ragtime composition of Henry Fillmore called Lassus Trombone. Bye. 
was the first important jazz composer, as well as one of the first true jazz pianists. Morton's well-known compositions, such as Jelly Roll Blues, King Porter Stomp, and Black Bottom Stomp, are still heard today. In different recorded versions of the same pieces, the solos of Morton's sidemen are often nearly identical, while his own solos are always quite different. For Morton up to today, most jazz pianists play their eighth notes with the loose, relaxed feeling commonly referred to as swing. In early jazz piano styles, the left hand plays the same role as in ragtime, playing bass notes on the first and third beats and chords on the second and fourth beats. Morton's piano style, however, sounds like an entire New Orleans-style jazz band. His left hand implies the syncopated bass lines, which are characteristic of Dixieland trombonists. The rhythmic and melodic aspects of his right hand are reminiscent of the cornetists and clarinetists of the early jazz bands. Morton also liked to use his left hand like a bass drum. This dissonant cluster effect was used in a similar manner 40 years later by Horace Silver and Cecil Taylor. The introduction of this variation, typical of Morton, begins with a harmonic surprise. In the first theme, there's a quote from his composition, Grandpa's Spells. James P. Johnson was known as the father of stride piano. Stride style is closely related to ragtime, but was played with a looser, more swinging feeling, and often at faster tempos. Johnson's most famous composition, Carolina Shout, was often used in the so-called cutting contests, which jazz pianists of the 1920s and 1930s loved to engage in. Johnson liked to group his left hand stride pattern in groups of three quarter notes. Instead of a bass note followed by a chord, he 
He often played two bass notes followed by a chord. This implies a 3-4 cross rhythm, which creates rhythmic tension. Johnson also liked to play two notes simultaneously, which were only a half step away from one another. In this way, jazz pianists can imply so-called blue notes, which actually are located somewhere in between these two notes. Unlike Jelly Roll Morton, Johnson often saved the biggest harmonic surprise for the end of the piece. Smith was one of the first pianists to use impressionistic harmonies. Pieces written by Smith during the 1930s, such as Echoes of Spring, Morning Air, and Rippling Water, were powerful influences on the young Duke Ellington. In Ellington's Portrait of the Lion and Smith's Portrait of the Duke, these musical giants expressed their mutual admiration. Smith used quarter note triplets in a particularly interesting way. By starting them on the second or fourth beat, the feeling of the bar lines is obscured and a kind of rhythmic tension is created. This variation ends with the rhythmic signature which was most characteristic of Smith's solo performances.
Hines is one of the most important early jazz pianists. His right hand was so melodic that his style was often called trumpet style. He may have been inspired by his father who played the trumpet. Hines used all the common tricks of the early horn soloists, such as stop time effects, unaccompanied rhythmic melodies known as breaks, double time feeling, and so on. Like many of the early pianists, he used the tremolo to imitate the horn player's vibrato. Instead of single bass notes or octaves, Heinz often played tense in the left hand, which resulted in a fuller, richer sound. As far as rhythmic complexity is concerned, Heinz was the most advanced pianist to appear before Errol Garner and Nat King Cole. He had the ability to continually spin out fresh melodic ideas. No other early jazz pianist was so full of musical surprises. No wonder he was the only pianist who could keep up with Louis Armstrong, as their famous recordings from the late 1920s clearly illustrate. Fats Waller was so gifted as a songwriter, band leader, and entertainer that his extraordinary pianistic abilities were often overlooked. He became the most famous of James P. Johnson's students, composing popular songs such as Honeysuckle Rose, Ain't Misbehavin', and Squeeze Me, as well as piano pieces in the tradition of Johnson's Carolina Shout. These include Handful of Keys, Alligator Crawl, and Smashing Thirds. Waller united the stride piano with the growing repertoire of American popular songs. One of his most important pianistic contributions was the use of three and four note left hand chords, which were widely spaced within the tenth intervals used by Hines and others. This aspect of his style clearly influenced the great art Tatum. This variation contains quotes from many of Waller's well-known songs and piano pieces. Thank you. 
Hines was considered the Beethoven of jazz piano, Teddy Wilson would be the Mozart. Wilson possessed a light, delicate touch, but could still create a powerfully swinging pulse. His exquisite melodic taste was equaled, perhaps, only by Count Basie. Sometimes, especially at fast tempos, he played broken tenths and quarter notes in the left hand. This technique is well suited to fast tempos and creates an interesting transparent variation of the stride accompaniment. Wilson's gift for highly developed harmonic decorations was surpassed only by Art Tatum. His left hand can often be heard searching intently for undiscovered possibilities in even the most often played standards. This variation was inspired by his solo recordings of the 1930s. With the exception of Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington is probably the most important musician in the history of jazz. He was not only the greatest of all American composers, but also the leader of a unique jazz orchestra and an incredibly imaginative pianist. Like Jelly Roll Morton, he played the piano as though it were an entire jazz orchestra. At the same time, however, he could play very convincingly in the stride, bebop, and even avant-garde styles. In the first part of this variation, we hear the colorful impressionistic harmonies used from such early works as Mood Indigo to his ballet, The River. In this part, the melody of the theme is retained, but some of the chord progression has been altered. In the second part, we hear the more dissonant blues-based aspect of his music, as heard in such works as Coco and The Clothed Woman. This side of Ellington was a strong influence on Thelonious Monk.
Art Tatum was without question the greatest virtuoso pianist in the history of jazz. His technique was so incredible that few pianists are capable even of a bad imitation. As a result, it was his harmonic imagination which most clearly influenced later jazz pianists. In relation to harmonic extensions and altered tones, Tatum had exquisite taste. He could also modulate suddenly into distant keys and return just on the right beat to the form of the song he was playing. His music represents, in fact, an ongoing tradition of reharmonization of standard popular songs. This tradition was continued through a completely different pianistic conception by Bill Evans. The popular piano style which evolved parallel to the early jazz styles was known as boogie woogie. This style is based mostly on simple 12 bar blues progressions, which are combined with a variety of repetitive bass lines or ostinatos. Boogie woogie was one of the most important blues styles from which the earliest forms of rock and roll evolved. The first example of this style was inspired by Mead Lux Lewis. His piece Honky Tonk Train Blues was one of the most popular boogie woogies of the 1930s. The left-hand ostinato is based on repeated chords, which create a rhythmic feeling known as a shuffle beat. In all blues-based styles, including jazz, notes are sometimes played which seem to contradict the accompanying chord. For example, the note F might be played against the C7 chord. The best musicians can hear ways of using such wrong note voicings which sound completely convincing. As Duke Ellington used to say, if it sounds good, it is good. Of course, musicians from all traditions simply use whatever sounds best to their ears. Then the theorists come along and try to figure out why it sounds good. In this variation, we hear a simple 12-bar blues progression instead of the chord progression from the theme. The melodic material, however, is based exclusively on the melody of the theme, especially the ascending triad.
next variation was inspired by Pete Johnson. It begins with a tremolo, as was often used in this style. The first five choruses are based on a left-hand ostinato, which was used by Johnson in such pieces as Roll and Peat. The last chorus is based on the form and chord progression of the theme. The left hand plays broken octaves, a boogie-woogie adaptation of the so-called walking bass lines, which are commonly heard in jazz from the 1940s to the present. This particular boogie-woogie pattern sounds remarkably similar to the disco style, although it originated 50 years earlier. It is also referred to as eight to the bar, since we hear eight eighth notes in each measure. The last example of this style was inspired by Jimmy Yancey. The left-hand ostinato figure used in his well-known Yancey stomp is based on a rhythm which jazz drummers play on the cymbals. This rhythm, which consists of alternating quarter notes and pairs of eighth notes, is commonly called the ride rhythm. After a typical Yancey introduction and five choruses of blues, the left-hand ostinato figure is combined with the harmonic progression of the theme. At the beginning of this last chorus, a typical boogie-woogie send-off is used. The harmonic surprise at the end of the piece is Yancey's personal trademark. No matter which key a given piece was in, he always ended on an E-flat-7 chord. Thank you. 